What's going on, Gifted Hands family? It is Elijah here bringing you another lesson. And today we're gonna to be talking about gospel songs and harmony in minor keys. So if you probably saw, we just finished our 12 key series talking about major harmony, gospel harmony and major keys. And so now we're gonna talk about minor harmony um, in all different keys. All right, we're gonna be jumping into a little series, a little mini series on minor harmony applied to gospel piano. So that's what we're starting off with today in this lesson cool so we're going to be looking at three songs three gospel songs that are written in minor keys and we're going to analyze some of the chords we're going to analyze some of the progressions and how the harmony and the songs are overall built and created all right so let's dive into it the three songs that we're going to be looking at are going to be glorious by martha munizzi we're going to be looking at um, beautiful savior by judith McAllister, and then the third song is going to be manifest by jonathan nelson those are the three songs that we're going to dive into all right so uh, don't worry, you don't have to go listen to them. I'm going to play them here for you, so stay tuned, all right? So before we jump into the songs, let's talk about three essential components, three crucial components that you need to play any song in a minor key, especially gospel. Uh, it's, it holds true if we're talking about jazz songs and minor keys. There's a lot of Christmas songs written in minor keys. Regardless of what the genre is, really, you need these three things to understand minor harmony as a whole. All right, so the first thing that we need to understand is a minor 251. All the songs that we're going to talk about have minor 251, so this is the first and one of the most important things about understanding minor harmony. A minor 251 is essentially the same concept as a major 251. If we have a minor scale, let's say we're in the key of C minor. So we're going to use uh, the C natural minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat six, or minor six, minor seven, one. So C natural minor has minor third, four, five, minor six, minor seven, to the one. Okay. So if we're talking about a minor 251, we're gonna play uh, a 251 based off of that. So two, one, two, D, we're gonna play some type of D chord to the five, one, two, three, four, five, to the G, to the C, 251, right? So the same notes as a major 251. Whoops, 251. But the only th difference is that the harmony, the chords that are built around those notes is a little bit different, okay? And so without getting too deep into the theory about it, uh, the theory of it, we're gonna take the chords from a harmonic minor scale, all right? So we're gonna uh, take our diatonic chords from a harmonic minor scale. All that means is, real simple, let's simplify. That just means the two chord is half diminished, all right? For a minor two five one, the two chord is half diminished. Or a minor seven flat five. So two, D minor seven flat five. Our five chord is normally gonna be altered. All right, it's gonna be altered. Uh, if we're staying diatonic, it's gonna be a flat nine. But as we'll see in these gospel songs written in minor keys, there's gonna be all different types of alterations. We're gonna see them all. So it's some type of altered chord. The five is gonna be altered, okay? And then we got our one, which were, it could, the one can take many different forms. The one could be like a basic minor seven chord. It could be minor nine. It could be like a minor six nine. It could be just a minor six chord. It doesn't matter, but some type of minor chord on the one, okay? It's just gonna depend on the context of the song. So, crucial components that you need to know for that. Two is half diminished, five is dominant, altered, altered dominant, and the one is minor, some type of minor, okay? So if you can remember that any minor key, our minor two, five, one is two half diminished, five altered, and then the one, some type of minor chord, then you're good to go, all right? So let's say we're trying to learn a song in F minor, right? Our minor two, five, one is gonna be one, two, G to C, two is the one, two, three, four, five, C is the five, to F is the one. So two, half diminished, five, altered, one, minor. Okay. Two, five, one in F minor. Let's do one more key. Let's try it in F sharp. Okay, so uh, let's do two, five, one. How do we find that? One, two, three, four, five. So an F sharp minor, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. We're looking at our scale degrees. Uh, G sharp is the two. C sharp is the five, F sharp is the one. So two is half diminished. One, 
two. G sharp half diminished. C sharp dominant or C sharp altered to F sharp minor. And it doesn't matter what type of minor chord it is, okay? Some type of minor chord. Whatever. Some type of minor chord, okay? So that is the first crucial component that we need to be able to play gospel songs, jazz songs, and minor keys. It's understanding two five ones. So if you don't know your two five ones, I would say go practice your minor two five ones in every single key. Uh, if you are part of our Gifted Hands Academy, we have plenty of lessons on minor two five ones and how to practice them. So check that out. But that's crucial component number one for playing gospel songs in minor keys. Understanding and knowing your minor two five ones. So the second component that we need to remember and to understand to play gospel songs in minor keys is that minor keys written in minor songs mix modes. They mix and they use different uh, scale degrees from different minor scales. So there's three main minor scales that you gotta start with, right? Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, flat six, flat seven, one. That's our natural minor. So the natural minor is one, two, flat third, four, five, flat six, flat seven to the root. That's our natural minor. Then we have a harmonic minor, which what is is what we said our um, minor two five one harmony is taken from the harmonic minor, which is one two minor third, four five, flat six, major seven, one. So people say the harmonic minor sounds Eastern, right? Very foreign. All right, so natural minor has a flat six or a minor six and a major seven, which gives us this big jump of a minor third from the sixth to the seventh. Okay? So we got that. And then our third minor scale is going to be the melodic minor, which is one, two, minor third, four, five, major six, major seven, one. Okay. Minor third, major six, major seven. So we have different notes to work with. And essentially what all this means is that when we look at gospel songs written in minor keys, what a lot of times happens is that we have a bunch of different diatonic chords to, to experiment with and to you know, interchange. So we have minor third, and then pretty much we just have a minor six, minor, uh, minor six, major six, minor seventh, and major seventh. So if we're, we're looking at C minor right now, right? So all the modes together give us pretty much, like I said, the minor six, major six, minor seventh, and major seventh. You have all these different scale degrees that will be mixed in. So you have different chords that are applied to all of those different scale degrees. So instead of just using one particular scale, instead of just using C natural minor, or instead of just using C melodic minor, or instead of just using C harmonic minor, we use all of the different modes interchangeably to give us vast amounts of harmonies, uh, or harmonic possibilities, I'll say, okay? So that's the second thing we gotta remember, is they mix modes, you'll see the flat six played sometimes, sometimes you'll see the major six played, sometimes we'll see the minor seven played, sometimes we'll see a major seventh played, all right? The options are, are limitless, okay? But those are the main kind of ways that they'll mix the modes, is by using the, ma the minor six and the major six, the minor seventh and the major seventh, all interchangeably. Okay, so we're not gonna have like one solid rule of here's a six, here's a seven. It'll be, sometimes it'll be minor six, sometimes it'll be major six. Sometimes it'll be minor seven, sometimes it'll be major seven. So just keep that in mind. Cool, and then the third thing to keep in mind when talking about minor harmony is that uh, there's a lot of altered cards. Chords, altered chords, not altered cards, I'm tripping. But um, so for most of our dominant chords, most of our dominant chords are going to be altered. Why? Just because when we're resolving to a minor chord, um, when we're resolving to a minor chord, um, an altered chord for some reason just resolves better. It sounds better when you're resolving to a minor chord. So if we're going from C altered to F minor, that sounds better than C extended to F minor. So we'll just see a lot of altered resolutions. Um, or even let's say we're going to C minor. G extended doesn't sound as good as G altered 
to C minor, okay? So there's a lot of altered chords because the resolution of an altered dominant chord sounds good when going to A minor chord. So you'll see altered chords galore in these songs. Cool. So now let's jump into some of song breakdowns. Let's analyze the harmonies in some gospel songs written in minor keys. Let's do it. All right, so we said the first song that we're gonna look at is uh, Glorious by Martha Munizzi. So here's the playthrough. Check that out real quick. So now that you've heard the song, there's two things uh, that you can take away from this song. If you learn this song, it's gonna be a technical challenge. There's some really nice lines, technically challenging lines. Yeah, there's some technically challenging lines in this song, um, which is just gonna expand you and, and force you to practice lines, force you to practice runs, um, licks, and expand your technical ability, cool? And then the second thing is that this song has some common minor chord progressions, right? And so because this song modulates, you get to practice some common progressions in multiple keys. So two important reasons to learn this song and to check it out, all right? So let's look at a couple different sections of this song real quick. So you heard the playthrough, but the verse of this song goes like this, um, and also we're in the key of G minor, okay? So actually, let's, let's go over our scale. Our G minor scale, one, two, three, minor third, four, five, minor six, minor seventh, to the one. Minor seven, minor seven, minor six, five, four, minor third, to the one. All right, so, Let's look at the verse. The verse goes like this. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the people present. Alright, so that's the verse, right? So all we got, the verse is actually pretty simple. We're starting on the one chord. When you come, one to the five, and the five is dominant. Sometimes you'll hear like that flat nine in there, because remember we said the five of a minor key is normally altered, so you'll hear they kind of bounce back and forth between that flat nine, they'll add it in there. Lifting up the name of, back to the one. Na -na 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 -na. Back to the five, back to the one. Then, we're gonna actually go to our one, but we're gonna play it as a major. So we're gonna go from G minor to like a G major, and we're gonna play play it with the B in the bass instead of the G. And this is really just a passing chord to take us to the four. So the four of our minor key is going to be a minor chord. Four is minor. So our one is minor, four is minor, our five is dominant, okay? So uh, when you come into this present, Lifting up the name of Jesus and your spirit. All right, so four minor. Then back to the one. Back to the five. Back to the one. Don't you wait. Then we're doing our major one. Back to the four as a minor. Wait another minute. Back to the one. Then we're going to... Play a little line on the five. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. And then when they end the verse, they're hitting the five as an altered chord. Sharp five, sharp nine, all right? So the verse is really simple. We're just pretty much hitting the one, five, going back and forth between the one and the five. 
Then we have a passing chord taking us to the four, back to the one. Then we hit to the five. So really just one, four, and five in the verse, right? The one's a minor, four is a minor, five is dominant, AKA altered, okay? So really simple verse. And then let's look at the chorus as well for this song. So the chorus is that. That actually really reminds me of, uh, what is it, Chick Corea has a song, Armando's Roomba that feels similar to that. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it's a jazz song in a minor key as well. I don't know, just getting sidetracked. But anyway, back, back into it. So Glorious, the chorus. All right, so yeah, Glorious, the chorus is, uh, let's look at the chord progression first. So the chorus chord progression is the one, da 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 ba ba, four to the four, four is minor, two, and now we're kind of switching modes because this chord and this chord are taken from, you can look at it as our, like, taken from our natural minor scale. When we get to the two, we're taking chords from the harmonic minor scale. Two's half diminished five is going to be altered, okay? And that's pretty much the chorus progression. Ba -da -da -ba -ba -ba. One, four, two, five, one, da -ba -ba. four, mm -mm. two, uh, uh, five, one, four, two, five, So that's really easy as well. One, four, two, five. It's just bouncing back and forth. That's it's like looping that, those four chords, okay? And then where is this coming from? This kind of uh, Latin, you know, line, Latin vibe. So all that is is coming from the chords that we just talked about, right? We're just arpeggiating and creating a line around the harmony. So our first chord is G minor, right? So we're doing da da da, G minor. And then walking into one of the notes of our next chord, which is C minor. And then ba da da da, ba ba da da. Walking into another chord tone. Then the next chord is A minor seven flat five. So then now we're uh, still building a line around this chord. Uh, so let me see. Da, 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 ba, da, da, da. Pretty much hitting chord tones. Root third, fourth, flat five, flat seven. Then landing on the chord tone, the third of our next chord, which is the D dominant. And then all we're doing is arpeggiating some of the notes of a D dominant chord. Three, five, Flat seven, flat nine, to the root. All right, so that's where that line comes from. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of the chord, some of the harmony in Glorious by Martha Munizzi. So key takeaways is we got the one chord as a minor, right? The one chord's a minor, the four chord's minor. And then we have our minor two five, right? Half diminished two, altered five to the one. Cool. So really, um, those are like the main chords, the meat of our minor keys. If you remember, the one's gonna be minor, four is gonna be minor, two's half diminished, five is altered. That'll take you very far when we're talking about gospel songs written in minor keys. Cool. So that's the first song. Let's dive into another gospel song written in a minor key, and that is going to be Beautiful Savior by Judith McAllister. Let's take a listen to that one right now.
right, so you just heard the playthrough for this song, a really dope song, another great uh, gospel song written in a minor key. This song is in B flat minor, okay? So our minor scale, one, two, three, minor third, four, five, minor six, minor seven, one. That's our natural minor scale. Minor third, minor six, minor seven, one. B-flat natural minor or B-flat Aeolian, same thing. Cool, so why should we learn this song? Why should we listen to this? This is a great song because it has some technically and rhythmically challenging lines and hits, as we'll see. So this song has some really technically challenging and rhythmically challenging, like I said, hits and lines and licks, okay? And then also it has tons of dominant chords, tons of altered chords. So if you're looking for um, a song to practice getting comfortable with dominant chords, to practice um, and master your altered chords, this is a great song to work on, cool? So like we said, the song is in B flat minor. Let's look at a couple sections real quick. So let's look at the verse for this song. Um, so the verse goes like this. Alright, so uh, that's the verse. Let's analyze it. We got um, Oh Powerful Jesus. We're starting on the one, All right? So just B flat minor. And then we're going to the four. So similar progression to glorious, right? One minor, four is minor. Then we're going to the two. But this time the two's not gonna follow our harmonic minor uh, chords or our harmonic minor, yeah, diatonic harmony. So they're gonna make the two altered. So two altered to the five. And the five is gonna be, we're gonna go from sus to dominant. Once, we, once again, five is altered. We got that flat nine in there. And then we're gonna hit one, six. But this six, if we look at it, it's a G dominant chord. So that doesn't fit the scale, the natural minor scale that we talked about, right? We said one, two, three, four, five. Six. This natural six or the uh, natural minor six is G flat. So where did the G come from? Well, that's actually from one of the other scales or the other minor modes. It's from our natural minor scale. Or sorry, not natural minor, uh, melodic minor. My fault, I'm tripping. Uh, from our B flat melodic minor scale, okay? So remember, the natural minor has a G flat, but the melodic minor has a G in it. So we're taking, we're borrowing chords from the melodic minor scale now, which is where we get this G dominant. Okay, so da 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 uh, One to the four, two, five, one, major, this is like a major six, the major six of the B flat scale, B flat minor scale. Six, two, altered, Five altered, back to the one, okay? So now the harmony's getting a little bit more complex. Once again, we got the one to the four, two, five, one, and I'm playing that six, the G dominant alt, uh, altered and rootless, but the main thing to keep in mind is what scales be taken from, which is our melodic minor scale. Two, altered, five altered, one. Four, two, five, then we got a line. Okay, and that's pretty much the whole verse. So only other thing we can look at is that line. If we look, arpeggiating a G flat 
major chord or major triad. So this just goes to show us how we're mixing modes, right? Because we already said we play a G dominant chord, but and then when we're leaving the verse, they're playing like a figure based off of a G flat major chord, which is the minor six or the flat six, right? So in the verse, they're going back and forth between a major six and a minor six, just meaning the root note of whatever scale we're talking about. Okay, so jumping back and forth between major six and minor six in that verse. And then let's go to the chorus. Let's see what they're doing in the chorus. So in the chorus, we got, I praise you now. And I lift my hands to your beautiful Savior. Lord, I don't know what you do. So, uh, in the chorus, the harmony switches up completely. We got a minor five now. So F minor chord, then B flat dominant to E flat minor. So we're, all we're doing is a five, one, four. So it's just a passing progression to take us to our four chord, which is E flat minor. Five. One, four. Then we're gonna hit a four. We're staying on the four, but we're making it dominant. This is just a passing chord to take us to an A flat chord, which is now I like to think of this as like a key change, essentially, or just a mode change. So when we hit this chord, this is I like to look at it as the five of D flat, which is our relative major. So the five of D flat, five sus, five dominant to the one of D flat. So we kind of temporarily go to the relative major of E flat minor, which is D flat major. Okay, so from the top of the chorus, I praise you now. Five, or I'll play it with this. Five, one, to the four. Four dominant. Uh, five of D flat to the one of D flat. And then we're going back into our six, major six of B flat minor, two of B flat minor, five of B flat minor, and then we repeat that pretty much thing, that whole progression again. Under your wing of, wings of loving care. And then this is our G, so our six, major six of B flat minor. One, two, three, four, five, six. But it's altered. You two full savior five, and then it ends on the four. Okay, so harmony gets a little funky in the chorus. I'll go through it one more time. Five, one, four, four dominant. Then we're changing keys. Let's go to like D flat major. Five of D flat to the one. Then we're going back into B flat minor. So the major six, two, five, one, one dominant, four, six, two, five. I know you'll always be there. I'll play that one more time. I praise you now. And I lift my hands to you, beautiful Savior. Lord, it's a wonder what you do keeping me safe. So the chords move fast, but we covered them, okay? The chords move really fast in the chorus. It's jumping a lot, but key takeaways again. Five, one, four. Going to D flat major, the five of D flat, to the one of D flat, and then we go back into B flat minor and we hit six, two, five, one, four. Six, two, five, four. 
So in this song and Beautiful Savior, we're playing around with the major six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, that's taken from our melodic minor scale. All right, or even you can think of that as like a, from a Dorian scale. But we're playing with that major six. And then in the verses, they also kind of um, have a flat six chord in there as well, G flat, okay? So that is glor or sorry, not glorious, that is Beautiful Savior by Judith McAllister. So let's look at the final song, which is gonna be Manifest by Jonathan Nelson and take a listen to that real quick. All right, so this is a really amazing song, and there's a couple of key takeaways from this song. The first one being that this song experiments like with, or just kind of changes modes so much. So the song is in F sharp minor. Uh, let's play our F sharp minor scale. One, two, minor third, four, five, minor six, minor seven, one, minor seven, minor six, five, four, minor third, two, one. Okay, so that's our natural minor scale, right? But this song goes crazy with throwing in like the, uh, using some notes from the melodic minor scale. And then we also have our harmony, meaning that minor two, oops, minor two, five, one from the harmonic minor scale. So this song we're using our natural minor, we're using our melodic minor, and we're using our harmonic minor as well. It's uh, it's mode crazy, it goes mode crazy, okay? So keep that in mind. And then also um, there's tons of passing chords in this song. So this song gives you a good idea of how to use passing chords applied to a minor key. So we're gonna talk about both of those things. Let's check out the verse. We'll look at the verse in the chorus and then call it a day, cool? So the verse goes like this. Uh, da -da, da -da. Something like that, right? So where do we start? Um, let's look at the regular chord progression for the verse. So remember, we're in F sharp minor. So we're starting on the one, basic minor chord. The future. Then we're going to the minor third, one, two, three, A. We're going to an A chord. Now, uh, like I said, when it comes to gospel songs, it's really hard to analyze it according to like your diatonic theory because like they interchange chords so much. So we got a sus chord, then we got a dominant chord. Um, so I just like to think of these minor keys as just like the root notes. I like to focus on the root notes, not, not necessarily the harmony attached to the root note, but just the root note, okay? So one to the minor third, then you go sus to dominant to the flat six, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
So minor six. And we're playing a major seven chord on that minor six. So D major seven, which is the root note is the minor six of F sharp minor. And then essentially we're going from minor six to the five. But they play some like a passing movement, they do. But really all that is is um, a movement over our five chord, which is C sharp seven, and it's altered. It's like a flat nine. Okay, then we get to the one, and there's like a bunch of passing movements in here. They do something like that over the one, which is taking our major six, moving it down chromatically to the minor six, to the five. To the five. So what's it like another modal movement? Experiment with different modes. This major six is taken from the melodic minor scale. The minor six is in the natural minor and the harmonic minor. And then they do it again. Going one, one, two, minor third. With a lick. Um, and then going to the minor six, which is D. One, two, three, four, five. Minor six. Then they go to the major six. Woo! So they have minor six, major six, and they played as a dominant chord. So they're going from like natural minor harmony to melodic minor harmony. To the two, to the five. And then this is like a one chord just inverted and this really if you look at this chord it's like an F sharp minor six this is taken from a melodic minor scale why because it has a major six the major six is not in it's not in our natural minor and it's not in our harmonic minor so that chord is taken from a melodic minor scale okay so that's pretty much the verse um, yeah, I don't know the words. Da da da. Da da. Third. Minor six. To the one. One, two, three. Still on the third. Minor six. Major six. Two. Two inverted, five. To the one. Okay? So, uh, it's crazy harmony with this song, but if you can just think about the root notes, think about the bass chords, all the extra flair and fluff isn't necessary. It's just understanding the bass chords and kind of where that's taken from, what scale is taken from. Cool? So that's the verse. Let's look at the chorus too real quick, and then we'll, we'll be done. So, manifest. So that's the chorus. Uh, let's look at it. Manifest, we're we'll starting on the one. One, just minor chord, right? Manifest. Then they go to, uh, this is really our one chord, our F sharp, but as a major. So they're going from minor mode to major mode. So not only do they take like the melodic minor scale, the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and interchange those, now we're going F sharp major as well. They're mixing in the major scale. And chords from the major scale. So F sharp minor to F sharp major and we're just moving the bass. Thirds in the bass. Alright. And then they're going to the four and they're playing the four chord as like this minor six. B minor six. One, two, three, four. But they're playing a passing progression to get to the four. So they're going to do five Alter dominant, one, alter dominant, to the four. So we got one, one, 
major, five dominant, one dominant, four. Then we got our major six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So remember this taken from our, the major six is from the melodic minor scale. So, ba -na -na -na. major six, it's a dominant. to the two, to the five, five, one, major one, five, one, four, and then let's do it again, major six, two, dominant, five, sus, bended to dominant, to minor, back to the one. All right, so they're jumping all over the place. And then um, later on in the chorus, uh, there's like a second chorus, like chorus one and chorus two. So in the second chorus, they add even more. They do something like uh, manifest, manifest. Oops. So pretty much the same thing starting off. Manifest, minor, the one as a minor. One major, F sharp major over A sharp. Five, dominant, one dominant, to the four, and then they tack on some extra chords. They go. So they temporarily, like, they switch keys real quick. We'll just call it a modulation. Call it what it is. So after we hit the four, later on in the chorus, they'll do E minor, or two, five, to D major. So they'll throw in a quick key change, 2-5 in D major, then they go back into F sharp minor by hitting the major six of F sharp minor. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, two, five, one. One major, five, one, four minor, 2-5 in D major, Going back, going back into F sharp minor, hit the major six, the two, five, one. Cool. So that is a lot. I know, I know. Just want to kind of give an intro, though, a general intro into you know minor harmony, some minor chords, and how it all works. So just keep in mind, like, I guess the biggest takeaways for understanding gospel songs and minor keys is that your one chord and your four chord are normally going to be minor. Your two chord, most cases gonna be half diminished. Your five chord's gonna be altered. Um, and those are like the, the chords that we need. You know, sometimes people throw in the flat six chord or the, the major six, you know, your minor six or your major six. Um, sometimes the two can be altered. You know, we can experiment with, uh, I guess, different chord qualities once we have that solid foundation. But like I said, just wanted to give you an introduction to minor harmony for gospel music, okay? So I'm thinking about doing a series like we did with the major keys, but uh, there's not a lot of gospel songs written in minor keys. So I need y'all in the comments, drop a comment below and tell me a song in, that's in a minor key, a gospel song that's in a minor key. I know there's uh, plenty of jazz songs out there, Blue Bossa, uh, Black Orpheus, there's tons, um, Footprints, Mr. PC, Equinox, there's a bunch of jazz songs in minor keys, even Christmas songs, there's a lot of Christmas songs in minor keys. What Child Is This, We Three Kings, uh, Green Sleeves, like Vince, Vince Giraldi has an album with a bunch of, uh, he has a Christmas album with a bunch of minor songs on it. Um, so, but I can't find a lot of gospel songs in minor keys, so if you have a gospel song in a minor key that you know of, drop it in the comment section below. And if we get enough songs, enough comments below, we might go ahead and do like a breakdown in each key. If not, we'll just talk about some like diatonic theory when it comes to minor chords um, and other things as well. So if you want, also if you want to see the song breakdowns, full song breakdowns for all the songs that are covered in this video, make sure to check out the Gift to Hands Academy. In the Gift to Hands Academy, I'm actually breaking down all of these songs. Uh, we have song tutorials for all three of these songs. So check out the Gift to Hands Academy. We are releasing those um, as well as many other song tutorials theory lessons, more in-depth lessons on minor harmony, on major harmony, 
on all topics dealing with gospel and jazz piano. Cool? So check that out. I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I wanted to give you a nice in-depth look at gospel harmony um, in minor keys. And hey, I'll see y'all next time. Enjoy your day. Thank you.